Get ready for brake test. Five, four, three, two, one, now. The power to stop is just as essential to the safety and efficiency of the railway as the power to move. A trainload of limestone with an all-up weight of 1,800 tonnes leaves ICI's Tunstead Quarry in Derbyshire. It takes the combined power of two locomotives to haul it up the incline to Peak Forest, almost a thousand feet above sea level. On the long descent down the other side towards Manchester, it needs a similar force to hold it back, approximately two and a half thousand horsepower. Everything depends on the efficiency of the brakes. They alone will control the speed of this train, keep it within safe limits, and finally, bring it to a stop. The vast majority of locomotives and railway vehicles in service today use a system of braking that was first introduced 125 years ago. Cast iron brake blocks are pressed against the wheel treads to stop the wheels from turning. The blocks are made from selected scrap iron at BREL's Horwich Works, using well-established foundry techniques. Molten iron is poured by ladle into moulds. The iron itself contains small amounts of other elements. A typical composition for BR brake blocks is carbon, 3%, silicon, 1.8%, manganese, 0.6%, sulphur, 0.08% and phosphorus, 1.3%. Compared with other types of brake block, they are cheap and easy to manufacture. Once removed from the moulds, they require little or no expensive machining or finishing. BR uses about three and a half million of them every year, at a cost of 10 million pounds. They prove to be very consistent in performance, even when contaminated by grease or oil. Prolonged use has little effect on wheel wear. In fact, the wheel surface is improved by the action of the brakes, giving better adhesion. That is why the HST power cars with their disc brake bogies, are fitted with cast iron brake blocks to scrub the wheel surfaces. But the cast iron does have some drawbacks. It's not only heavy, it's also brittle, which makes the blocks liable to crack. They wear rapidly, which means they have to be changed frequently, particularly when heavily used. The iron dust that rubs off them sticks to paintwork and makes it difficult to clean. And, under certain conditions, they give off sparks which can start fires. This fire hazard was becoming so serious that a full-scale investigation into the problem of spark emission was carried out by British Rail Research. A high-speed cine camera shows how sparks are formed. Under the action of braking, the blocks become very hot and wear in preference to the wheel. Debris is released as iron dust at such high temperatures that it ignites. The sparks are actually burning molten metal. Research had shown that spark emission was related to the phosphorus content of cast iron. For test purposes, a batch of special blocks was made containing different amounts of phosphorus, ranging from virtually nothing up to a maximum of 7%. The blocks in normal use contain about 1.3%. Comparative tests were made using these special blocks by simulating different operating conditions on a full-scale brake dynamometer. What happens, for example, when the driver of an EMU travelling at 110 km per hour has to make a full brake application?
During this simulated emergency stop, using standard BR blocks with 1.3% phosphorus, it's noticeable that quite a few sparks are being produced. The clock shows the time it takes to stop, 22 seconds, whilst the wheel has made 108 revolutions. The amount the blocks have worn was measured by weighing them before and after each test. This block, being weighed now, contains 3% phosphorus and will be used on test under exactly the same conditions as the previous one. Axle load, 13.5 tonnes, speed, 110 kilometres per hour. Full brake application, now. Under these conditions, the higher phosphorus content of the cast iron resulted in fewer sparks. And whereas it had taken 22 seconds for the wheel to stop turning in the previous test, now it takes only 19. It also wore less. And by measuring the weights lost by each block during this series of tests, it was found that the wear rate was directly related to the phosphorus content of the cast iron. When there was almost no phosphorus present, the wear was considerable. With increasing amounts, up to about 4%, there was a marked reduction. Above 4%, there was only a slight improvement. Tests at different speeds and with different axle loads gave further evidence of the benefits of high phosphorus, even under the most extreme conditions. Here, for example, is the equivalent of a Deltic class locomotive fitted with standard cast iron brake blocks containing 1.3% phosphorus, making an emergency stop from an unlikely 180 kilometers per hour. Tests of this sort can only be carried out using special equipment under controlled laboratory conditions, but they give a clear indication of what would happen in practice. The burning of the debris is so intense that it appears like a white flame. The cooling down of the wheel between tests gives some idea of the amount of heat that's been generated. The tests were repeated several times and filmed so that performance could be compared. Here's a direct comparison between high and low phosphorus blocks. 3% and 1.3% in identical tests. Axle loading, 20 tons. Speed, 180 kilometers per hour. Braking, now. At 10 seconds, there's little difference. Coming up to 20 seconds, 1.3% phosphorus and 3% high phosphorus. After 30 seconds, the contrast is even more marked. By 44 seconds, the high phosphorus blocks have stopped the wheel. With standard blocks, it continues for a further 12 seconds. Equally marked was the comparison in wear between the low and high phosphorus blocks. The only disadvantage, it seemed, was that the greater amount of phosphorus in the cast iron made it more brittle. To guard against the risk of blocks disintegrating in service, they are made with integral steel backing plates. The plate itself will not prevent the block from cracking. What it does is hold the pieces together, even in the most extreme circumstances. Extensive field trials with high phosphorus cast iron blocks have confirmed the test results obtained at the technical centre.
Between 1973 and 1977, on average, about 100,000 high phosphorus blocks were produced each year. Following a British Railways Board directive that all rolling stock operating at up to 120 kilometers per hour should be fitted with high phosphorus blocks, the numbers have increased substantially. Apart from the greatly reduced fire risk, their much better wearing properties will mean less frequent replacements, with a consequent saving in time and money. In cash terms, there is a potential saving of more than two million pounds a year. What might at first have appeared to be a limited research project into the causes of sparking could prove to be, commercially, one of the most rewarding. <laughs> 